in vitro fertilization. IVF. In vitro fertilization, as the word says, it's fertilization of the egg in vitro standing for in the lab. So the babies are actually made in the fallopian tube. That is why it's like fallopian tube is queen. It is the factory where the baby is actually made. So if the fallopian tubes are blocked or the sp sperm cannot swim up or get to cause fertilization in the fallopian tube or any other condition, that's when we recommend for couples to go through in vitro fertilization. We assist with the fertilization, which then leads to the formation and development of the baby, which then which then happens in the womb of the woman. So with in vitro fertilization, after all the investigations and tests have been done, usually by day two of her menstruation, she comes through and we make sure that the conditions are all good. There's no abnormal cyst and all of that. Then we give the woman medication. This medication, unfortunately, is mostly found in injection form. But we don't give big stabbers like this where you'll be stabbing yourself on a daily basis. No, just teeny weeny needles just to get the medication through. So the woman then injects herself. It's more like giving the woman manure for the eggs. On a natural cycle, the woman releases from the multiple eggs that she has on, she recruits on a monthly basis. She then releases just one egg to be fertilized normally. Now with in vitro fertilization, since you'll be going through such hard lens, we try to get as many eggs that are available that can be recruited for that month or that cycle. So we give the woman injections, which she then injects mostly around her umbilicus. With a small pinch of skin, she then injects in, mostly in the evenings. We do give a certain time, usually around 4 to 6 p.m., that she chooses that time that is more convenient for her that she can start injection injections from day three of her cycle. She then comes in five days later, plus minus, and then we check if the body is actually responding by doing ultrasound and checking the number of the eggs and the size of the eggs. We don't see the actual eggs, but we see follicles, which is the houses of the eggs which are found in the ovaries. So we have a certain size or measurement that we look for, which is usually around 18 millimeters. And we start off at about two to eight millimeters. So these injections are more like manure, if you think of gardening processes. So you are just feeding your body with manure so that the eggs can develop and mature. So she does this for plus minus 10 days and she comes for visits for four, after four days or two days or three days until we reach the required size. And we also look at the cushion that the womb makes where the baby will be implanting. And we need that to be at least at eight millimeters or so. So when we start off an, in a cycle, you find that the lining is usually just around four millimeters or less. So with the manure being given or the daily injections that she gives herself, we then get to a point where we are ready to harvest. During the process of harvesting the eggs, we do put the woman into a process called conscious sedation. Now this is when we put up a drip and give her some medication that will make her to sleep and not feel any pain. So there is no operation that is involved with IVF. We do not cut women open to take out the eggs. So a vaginal sauna is done and it has a small probe where we can put in a needle that goes in through the vaginal canal and straight to the ovaries. And we have a small suction that is connected to the needle where we are able to withdraw all the fluid that is found in these follicles and in this fluid, the microscopic egg or oocyte is found. Once this fluid is collected, this sample is then taken through to the embryologist. Now this is whom we call our babysitter. 
because then he sits under the microscope, puts this fluid under the microscope and is able to hand pick each and every egg that is found in this fluid. You cannot see it with your naked eye. That's why all this that's why all this expensive equipment is required during IVF. And that's basically what you pay for. So these microscopes are able to help the embryologist to identify the eggs and he goes egg hunting. The number that you give us should be the number that is actually detected. And those eggs are then separated and fertilization then takes place. We can fertilize in two ways. One, if the sperm quality is good, we do straightforward in vitro fertilization where we put the egg and pour the sperm and they do the jawling throughout the hours that we give them and we come after a certain time to check has the sperm been accepted or not? Has the proposal been accepted or not? So when we see what we call two polar, board, uh, two polar bodies and two nuclear cells, to us that's a sign that things went well, fertilization did take place. So the egg is no longer just one nuclear body or one nuclear cell. So there's two now that are involved. So from that time of fertilization, the embryo now is formed and multiplication of the cells takes place. So the cells divide for them to multiply. That also is highly reliant on the type of or the quality of the egg and the sperm that we find. Scientifically, it's said that the first three days of development is highly dependent on the male factor. So we watch the egg and the sperm, which is now fertilized into a zygote and it grows to develop into an embryo by day five. This process of day zero to day five is a process that would naturally take place within the fallopian tube where fertilization takes place and the embryo then travels all the way into the womb. So on day five, sometimes day three as well, the decision to then transfer the embryo is taken. To transfer the embryo, it's a happy day, it's a happy process, no one is put to sleep, we're all wide awake and the partner can also even be there. And this process is now done and a small catheter is used to take these babies, it could be one baby, it could be two babies, that are actually transferred into the mother's womb. So the small catheter is inserted vaginally and in through the cervix, which is the mouth of the womb, and we do this under sonar guidance so that we ensure proper placement of this embryo. And you can actually see the marks that are made by the embryo on the ultrasound. And that becomes your baby's first picture. After the embryo transfer, we then ask the couple to do a pregnancy test 10 days after the procedure. And that's where the outcome of the IVF process is determined. It's either a positive pregnancy test or a negative pregnancy test. And if it's a negative pregnancy test, we go through the factors that could have resulted in that. And we can always try again. So I hope that gives you an idea of what an IVF process looks like or sounds like or what goes on when a person is going through IVF. It's a very emotionally draining process to go through. A lot of emotions are in, uh, invested in it. Finances also are needed for such processes and such science to actually take place. But the outcomes thereof are beyond any value, are beyond any price. I do hope that this encourages you to also do show up for your checkup. Thank you. And that is it from us at Family Matters Fertility Center. We once again would like to thank the Cosa family who were willing to share their story with us and help you to learn from their experience. To all the couples that are going through infertility, let us continue to hold on to hope, the science, and prayer. You keep well.